Well, Windows has got different meanings, basically. I mean, people commonly will refer to Empire Windows ship, uh, which left Jamaica on 25th of May, arrived in Tilbury on 21st, evening of 21st of June. And, and then when the passengers disembarked on the next day, on the 22nd, uh, it's, that, it's that journey and that history of the, of the pioneers of that ship. But there were other ships that came before, after, and a lot of people came and playing. So I think it's, Windrush describes a moment in British history around migration after the Second World War. Um, Windrush is about, people use the Windrush around the Windrush generation, which people arrived in Britain from the Caribbean in the 50s, 60s and early 70s. I see them also come from Africa. I see them part of that Windrush generation too. But also Windrush is about so it's, a, it's about the rise of multicultural Britain, of people come from different parts of the Commonwealth, uh, and more recently from Europe, and, and make Britain great in terms of the labour, the migration history. So um, the image of the Empire wouldn't interest me. DCMS um, had a survey they did some years ago, and the image of the ship was voted as one of the most I think 100 icon images of post-war Britain, along with the Mini Cooper, the post box, etc. So it's part of British history. So, and lots of people would interpret Windrush in different ways. And young people now will have a different take on how they see Windrush. I was born in Barbados. Twenty-four years old. Twenty-four. That's young. Scary. Yes, we um, we leave um, Guadalajara Airport. We stop in Puerto Rico. Then you are at the National Airport. Then from there we come straight to England. Yes, I had a very good friend of mine. Plus, I had my girlfriend, which is Norma, which became my wife after a certain time. Yes, the British government had a range of Irish government that they find comedy fast, but at the time, it wasn't a very good place because there were six of us in the room. No no heating, no fires, no water, nothing at all. So we had to get um, some newspaper and put it in the fireplace and light it to keep warm for the night. You know, we had to sleep in our clothes, didn't it? I came to Lockett Road, 42 Lockett Road. Mm -hmm. Then after that, the guy we um, we, what he used to do, he used to buy these old houses, do them up, and then put us in another one. It went to um, College Road in Harville. Then after a while, we had obviously the accommodation very pleasant, so we had to live from there. So we had to find accommodation for ourselves. So then we went to Heinz Road, and we went to Heinz Road, we came out to Locker Road again, for the Locker Road. And after that, we stayed there for about nine years. Uh -huh. I went by the barbers in 1976 with my wife and two girls. <laughs> and what was what was it like going back? Oh, it was great. I couldn't wait to get back there. But we, we haven't had um, the barbers. This was playing fish and cocoa. It was ready to get my hands on it, you know. <laughs> so <laughs> we went and had a good time, you know. We didn't stay for six weeks and we came back. Take that again, yeah. Yeah, and I, meant to, I get to see my grannies. And you've got, yeah, that's what you guys are curious, got to see the granny, uncles, you know, cousins. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The first thing they got to do is love and honour their parents at all times. Obey the law and order, always. Learn to respect other people from different generations, the culture. And you can hope for the best and learn to live in peace. Well, I wish, like, you know, I wish we had um, like a, a black community where the kids can, we can get all the members and black people in Harrow could come at the club, like, and when the grand kids there, the, you know, the daughters and make the friendship and come and have a little, have a little Sunday or Saturday thing for a Saturday. And I'm hoping that they can educate the kids in school, but we went right what we had to do. But when we came here, the British government was in problem. They need people to come look after the trains, the nurses, 
and fill them gaps during the war time. And when we came here, we had we had fill in for that, do them sort of things, didn't it? Mm. And in the end, they seemed to give us a good break after that, you know. But it should respect us for that. Mm. Yeah, yeah. As you say, Dad, um, you, unity and unite. That's right. That's what we should do. Dad, you got to learn to love, yeah. respect, and unite everybody. I learn to live in peace. Yeah. Okay, Daddy. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed interviewing you. My pleasure, my, my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> My home was um, St. James Barbados. Um, I grew up in a little town called uh, Trent. And I spent time between my aunt in Trent and my grandmother in the Baywoods. Well, my mother um, came to the UK to join her sister. Um, I'd never really heard about England um, because I was just a little boy at school. Um, and so I didn't really have any impressions of England, um, you know, so I was just coming to join my mum. Because we were underage as such, we were handed over to, I think they called her the Persa, and, you know, she was tasked to look after us on the flight and then when we got through um, the other end. The only thing that I found strange was, I mean, growing up in Barbados, every house was virtually detached. And then coming to the UK, driving down the streets, you see all the ha um, houses are attached to one another. So that I felt that was strange. Uh, being September, coming up from Barbados, where it was sort of 29-ish degrees, and in September here, it was about 18, it was a little bit chilly. I came straight to Wheelstone and uh, to 50 Graham Road, where okay. my mum bought the house in 1970. Um, and I came up in 1971, so she'd been in the house about a year. I went on, on British Airways, uh, and again, the, fir the first stop was Antigua, and then on to Barbados. And waiting at the airport was one of my uncles. Learn your history and view everything with an open mind. Um, it's very important because I wasn't really um, sure that I was part of the Green Rush generation until they told me the date. Um, it, but I, I obviously I came in by, by plane. Um, so it's important for me and sort of my siblings and, and uh, my kids and so on to know that I was part of the Green Rush generation especially with all the difficulties we're having now. The young black people in Harrow, um, first of all, need to respect themselves, um, respect themselves, respect others, respect the law. Um, you know, just just try, try what they can, try to do, do what they can to portray themselves as a better person. Um, I know, you know, a lot of people look at us and straight away because of the color of your skin, you're getting pushed back. But I think if we have an open mind and a positive attitude, I think a lot of the youngsters that are coming through now will, in years to come, um, progress, pro probably progress quicker than we have. I found it reasonably easy. Although I had to deal with the stigma of racism with the teddy boys in those days, and I had to defend myself vigorously when they wanted to pick a fight with me, I came out the winner. I took whatever jobs I could get and working through black smog and heavy snow conditions were very Hard. One of my jobs in my early days was as a laborer to help build a multi-story building 
at a junction of Pembroke Road and West End Road in Royce And the building is still standing today. I ended my working life with Royal Mail as a postman in Harrow. And during that time, I was promoted to an inspector. As the future Windrush generation will never experience what I went through, just build your life the best you can and live in harmony with others and try and create a better world that you and others can enjoy living in. I feel it is important that the next generation do not encounter the experiences of the predecessors who came upon HMS Windrush from 48 in order to work to get a better life in England. I think the Windrush generation in Harrow would benefit from learning as much as they can from those who have been through the trials and tribulations in overcoming a multitude of disparities. By researching the Windrush records, not only in Harrow, but in other parts of the country. Thank you, Dad. That was very interesting having this talk with you. Thank you, daughter, for listening. <laughs> Always.